Let's get started. I don't know where everybody's at this morning. I mean, it's a nice sunny day outside. It's cold on Central. But it's nice and sunny. But uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer before we get started. And let's remember all those that have loved ones that passed. Bernice's family and uh, Vicky's uh, dad died. Marietta is going to be today and tomorrow. Let's remember that. Uh, it's been a long time since I went to three funerals in a week. It's been a long time. And, huh? Oh, no. Hmm. <laughs> she said her picture fell off the wall. <laughs> Tell Jerry to hook it up better next time. But a uh, bunch of us met last night. We went and watched that movie, God's Not Dead, yesterday. And then uh, right behind us was uh, uh, David's church. Yeah. Wallbridge. Wallbridge. We had 5 o'clock. Wallbridge had 7 o'clock. Yep. I hope it gets a good, I hope it gets a good rating. But, I mean, if people go see it, they're going to get something anyway, you know. It's all about college. I mean, it, it, in a, in a philosophers in a college will tell you that. <laughs> I mean, most of them will tell you there ain't no God. Everything is, you know, is it, it just happens. <laughs> it's self, self-contained and self-sufficient. Well, anything anything that is had to come from something, and we know in the flesh that anything that we do, somebody has to take care of it. Yeah. I don't care what you do. You build this church, somebody's got to take care of it. If you build this church and you just let this church go, in five years it would fall down yeah. because of the condition of the air, and it would fall down and nobody could live in it. I mean, within a year, there'd be black mold all over this place, and they'd have to tear it down anyway. Uh, and that's a problem they're having with these houses that they foreclose on. If they don't sell them within a year, then they get black mold in them, and a lot of them are going to have to tear down anyway. Uh, and so uh, if you leave something sitting and you don't take care of it, so I don't know why people says there ain't no God. There's a big universe here. Somebody has to take care of it. And I told my buddy one time, he said he didn't believe in God because, you know, his brother died and one of his sisters died by accident. And he said, why would God let that happen? I said, hey, we live in a world that where there's a lot of impurities, man. And people, bad things happen to good people. Uh, bad things happen to bad people. Uh, you know, and, and, and so I said, it, it, uh, you can't control that. But I said, there's got to be a God because you look at everything that's made. I said, it's perfect in its own self. Everything that's made is perfect in its own self. And you ain't got nobody out there fixing it. I told him, I said, me and your electricians, Men make these big presses, and they make all these, all this, all this technology that we have. But guess what? They pay men. You to take care of it, because <laughs> these impurities in it. But that that tree out there, you don't have to tell that tree when to put the leaves back on. And I said, because it's perfect. God made it. He said it's good. He blessed it, and that's the way it is. And it knows when to drop its leaves. It knows when to put its leaves back on. And. They. It's all for this. You know, they said that uh, they said when they, when this global warming come, they said there's big hole in the ozone layer over Mexico. Well, in six months later, that big hole of ozone moved somewhere else, way over there. It's a way. It's a way that God allows this earth to cleanse itself, and. We are just, anything that we can do is like putting one drop of ink in the ocean. It's as simple as that. You put a drop of ink in the ocean, what, does, what happens to it? It, it goes. You go, you go, you put a car in a garage, you get in the garage, that car is going to kill you. Within a 15, 20 minutes, you'll be dead. And, but out here in the road, I mean, cars running all over the place, you know. 
We don't. Why? Because our earth just sucks it up. It's, it's a vast. I mean, you don't, you don't look at that plain they're trying to find. And look what a vast area. They, I mean, it, it's two inches away from Australia they're looking for, and they said it's 1,400 miles. Man, <laughs> you could drive almost to Florida, man, before you could get to that piece of debris they're looking for. <laughs> Well, see, any, anywhere, there's, anywhere there's rock and you could suck oil out of the earth where there's rock and it's going to stand it. But you suck oil out of Florida and you leave a big cavity down there about 10,000 feet deep sucking oil out of Florida, sand's going to go down there and somewhere it's going to be a sinkhole. <laughs> and you don't know what they're doing because they could be out, they could be 20 miles out in the ocean, send a drill down and go right over underneath Florida and suck all the oil out of Florida and nobody knows it. And, I don't know, but them, them sinkholes has to come from somewhere. But anyway, let's quit meddling and get back into our. But let's remember all the ones that have lost ones, especially, and remember our loss that's in the church. That little girl's going to get baptized this morning. She called Rita this morning and said she wasn't going to get baptized because they're going to go see God is dead because of her father, her boyfriend's dad bought these tickets, and they, they all want the family to go see God is dead. And so she canceled their baptism. So, so she's not going to get baptized today. And so, anyway, uh, let's remember her. And she is unlearned. Maybe this is some time because Rita's trying to be talking to her because she don't know nothing. And, uh, you know, because she don't, hey, she's never went to church. And, but her boyfriend, the one that sings, you know, he's been in church all his life. He, was, he belongs to heritage. But her, she's unchurched. And so I don't know what the parents feel about this or whatever. But people need to be educated. This might be a time for, yep, yep, but, but she don't know nothing about this churchy stuff, you know, so you won't have to be taught, you know, because she talks to, Rita talks to her, and, and she's kind of confused, and, and I told her, I said, well, this could be a good thing, because before you get baptized, you know what, you need to know what you're getting baptized for, I mean, you need to know that, and, and. And it's one thing to be saved, but it's another thing to understand why you're doing what you're doing. And, and I mean, I know God can open up our eyes and give us understanding, but God has given us teachers and God has given us preachers for us to teach each other and to, to learn from each other. And she needs to learn. And she needs, you know, she needs to know that stuff. And because you don't want somebody to get baptized just to be getting baptized because I got a boyfriend that's a Christian. I want to be a Christian too, so I'm going to get baptized because I want my boyfriend. You know, you don't want that. Now, you know, does that happen? Yeah, that happens. And, and so, yeah, eventually. But you're going to pay a lot of price. You'll be, pay a big price for that. You'll pay a big price for that. Uh, that's right. But, but let's remember them in prayer. Uh, remember her in prayer. And, you know, if you can give some insight to her, you know, do it. And, uh, you know, and, uh, but, uh, but let's go, Lord, in prayer. Heavenly Father, we praise your holy name this morning, God, as we come into the house of worship. Father, we just want your spirit to lead and guide us, God, and just feed our souls and our spirit this morning, God, from your word. And that, Father, we could be strengthened by it. We could find what we need there, Lord, that, Father, we could just help other people. And, Father, we thank you, God, for your mercy and your grace that you have given to us. Father, help us also to distribute that among our brothers and sisters in Christ. Heavenly Father, give us a heart, Father, that would have compassion. And, Father, we just pray this morning, God, you just bless all the requests that have been spoken. Father, we pray that you would just touch those that have uh, death in their home, Lord. And, Father, have a passing that, God, your spirit would just overshadow that family. And let the love of Jesus Christ, uh, Father, be that bright cloud that uh, overshadows them, Lord, that for they can find a refuge in you. And, Father, we pray, God, for the loss that's in our church. Father, we pray, God, that they would just continue, Lord, to come and hear your word as it's being preached, God, and songs that's being sung that would minister to their heart, that, Father, they could come and receive Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you, God, for this hour that you've given us as we go through our Sunday school. Father, bless this time that we spend together. Feed us from your word, and we'll praise the holy name for it. For it's in Christ's name we pray, and amen. 
So let's look at our lesson today. Put your money to work. God wants us, <clears throat> God gives everybody talents. God gives everybody abilities. We have it. Uh, people that are from, that come from the other countries that come to America, they're more energetic than people that are born here. Uh, it's just like one time when I got laid off at Ford Motor Company back in 81, 79, and 80, up to 81 was a slow time for the automotive, and they laid a lot of people off. I got laid off. I had several years of seniority then, uh, but I got laid off. And so my cousin got laid off. He's got less seniority than I did, and, and, that, and they told some of them, they said, you probably never will be called back. And so, so I told him, I said, you know what, let's go to Oklahoma. The oil fields, man, is just like begging for people. So we go down to the oil field. We go down there and down to Oklahoma and was putting our application in. And them Oklahoma people that had the oil wells, people that, you know, that did this stuff. And we went out in the field one day just to see what it was like, you know, with the company. And uh, they said, we like you people that come from the north and, the, and, and from the, you know, the southwest. It would be the northwest from where they're at over, you know, like in Virginia, Middlesbrough, Kentucky. They said, we like you people, man. You guys are good workers. He said, these little snotty-nosed rich boys down here, he said, they don't none of them work. <laughs> All they want there's a fair, fair area to drive around because they're rich. You know, their dads are, you know, they own all this stuff, and they don't like to work. But so they like these guys come down there to work and, 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 and pr to provide. But we all have abilities. God gives us uh, talents. God gives us things that we can do. Uh, and God wants you to use it. See, a lot of Christians think, well, all I got to do is give them money. You know, if I give my 10%, I've done God's service. Well, that's not, that's only just one little notch of what God needs from you. See, God needs, not only God does the church need tithings, but the church needs singers, preachers, teachers, people that are good counselors, people that are good, has a good ear, you know, people that has sometimes God, the church needs somebody that's boisterous. You know, to get right to it. Some people are humble. Some people wouldn't hurt a fly on a guy. But some people are kind of dogmatic. They'll just tell you like it is. And I had an aunt like that. And if you, if you went in her room, she would tell you what she thought of you. You need to do this. And you, somebody would come in there a little overweight, and she'd tell them. She said, you need to lose some weight. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, you know, she just told them like it was. You know, and you go in there complaining about your wife or your husband one, she say, you know what you need to do? You just need to suck it up, and you need to work it out. And, and, and she would tell you, and, and she was right forefront. Well, there's people like that. We need that, don't we? Sometimes we need to be told straight out. You know, you're a jerk today. Get over it. <laughs> and so you don't like it, and, and you make people mad. And sometimes people, and, and I told you this story before, this guy was having trouble with his marriage. He'd come to me and talk to me. And I told him, I said, I don't know nothing about your wife. I said, I don't know anything. I am not talking to her, but I'm talking to you. Now, I said, let's talk about you. Let's don't talk about your wife, what your wife has done or what is. Let's talk about you and straighten him out. So I told him, I, I told him exactly what I thought. Well, he walked away. I didn't see him again for two weeks. Well, what I said to him made him mad because I was talking to him. I wasn't, talk, I wasn't agreeing that, yeah, you need to do this. With, you know, your wife is, you know, you know, she's an old bitty, you know, and all this kind of stuff. No, I said, I'm talking about you because I don't know your wife. I'm talking to you. And it made him mad. Well, he come back about two weeks later, man, and, you know, he said, brother, he said, I got to apologize. I said, what? I mean, I, 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 what the heck are you apologize to me for? He ain't done nothing to me. He said, remember the other day when I come talk to you? I said, yeah. He said, you made me mad. I said, Really? He said, yep, but he said, me and my wife are okay now. And he said, I got to think about what you said, and you told me the truth. And he got mad, see, because I talked to him. I didn't talk to his wife, <laughs> and so I made him mad. And, and, but I, was, I just told him what the Scripture said, and that's all I did. I mean, I didn't, I didn't get mean with him or nothing, and I just told him what the Scripture said, but he didn't like it because I, because I convicted him, he didn't like what I said. And, it, see, he was in the conviction. But see, when, when the Lord opened up his eyes and he saw what he, you know, what he was, then he come back and he apologized to me. And, and you know what? And I said, thank you, Lord, because <laughs> I didn't know he was mad at me. I had all with my brother and didn't even know it. <laughs> but, but see, God gives us gifts, and that's one of the talents that you have. That's what God wants you to give. God only, not only wants to give you 
uh, give a little bit of a money that, that, that we give God. And 10% is a little bit of money. And it's not that much. And, but God wants us, look at the first page there on page 45. Groceries. Have we ever bought people groceries here at this church? Yes, many times. Huh? 45. Page 45. No, 45. And how about medical expenses and insurance? I don't think we've done too much of that here, but I don't remember that we've helped anybody with a, have we? You know, I can't remember that. But housing, yes. Clothing, yes. Car expenses, I don't know about that. I don't know if we help anybody with car payment, but we have electric bills, water bills, gas bills. We have done that. And so that's the church's job. Yep, yeah, we did that. Yes, we did. Yes. See, so, so th- th- that's what God wants from us. Uh, you know, James told us, if you see somebody that don't have a coat and you even pray over them and say, you go your way, and you, it, even though you prayed over them and didn't give them a coat, what did it profit you? Nothing. See, and, that, and that's what he's talking about. So God wants us to share. If God gives you the ability to get you have the ability to give. See, there is more ways than to get than you could ever think about if you just look at it at the world. See, the people, like what I was going to say, the people that come from overseas that come to America, they love to prosper. American people, we are taught to be islands. See, my my siblings, my brothers and sisters, they are, you're taught to be an individual. Americans are taught to be individuals, and you compete against each other. American families compete against each other. They don't help each other like the people that come from overseas. People from overseas, they are a unit. This one works for this one. This one works for this one. This one. First thing you know, they own all the gas stations. They own all the oil-changing places. They're getting all the party stores. And, they're, and now the Indians are buying every motel in America. Everywhere you go to a, a motel now, it's an Indian. You know why? They're all doctors. They're, they, they get up into a high echelon of, of in, in lawyers, and they get up there, and they help each other out. They spend their money to help their siblings to prosper. And we as Christians could learn from that because the first church that was ever, in, 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 in when Peter and them was uh, uh, in the early church when he was baptizing them, they brought everything that they had to the church. And then the church dis- dis- distributed, they distributed it to the people in need as they had need. Remember when uh, uh, Sapphira and them come and, and, and they held some back and they died right there in front of them? That story? That's what they were doing. They were bringing everything in and distributing it to the need of the people. And, and so if we could get like that in the church and, and, and get that mentality of giving, and, and, and the more you give, the more God gives. And that's a truth. You can't outgive God. And so, but God wants us to help. Let's look at our lesson. Let's look at 2 Corinthians uh, 8, 10 uh, through 10, 11 on page 46. Now, this is what we was talking about, uh, the church in Macedonia giving a collection to the people that was going down to Jerusalem. And, and Paul was uh, uh, praising them. He was bragging about them, uh, 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 their, their love that they had for these other uh, uh, Christians. He says, and herein I give my advice, for this is expedient for you who have begun before not only to do but also to uh, be forward a year ago. Now, therefore, pre- uh, perform the doing of it that as there was uh, a readiness to will, so there may be a performance also out of what which ye have. Now, he is, he is leading them up to 
he's going to take up a collection for the church down in Jerusalem. And he wants them to take up his collection, if you read a little bit further, before they have the service. He said, I want you to do it before and, and, and put aside this money so that it, you won't give when I get there and I have this need that you won't give grudgingly, but you're going to give from the heart and you're going to give as God has given to you. And that's what Paul is talking about. He said everyone needs to be challenged in life. The apostle Paul challenged the believers in Corinth to step up their giving. He used the example of the Macedonian church to extend this challenge. Relief was needed in Jerusalem, and an offering was being taken to provide for various needs. A year earlier, the Corinthian believers had promised to do this, yet they had not completed the task. Therefore, Paul was encouraged them to complete their uh, commitment uh, as the Mas uh, uh, Macedonian believers had done. And that's what it was all about. That's it in a nutshell. Now, the next page, it says, I am giving my opinion advice. And this is what Paul said. Paul was not acting as God, but it was as if he opened his heart and spoke to the people. Let me share with you today what's on my heart about all of this. And that's what he was doing. And it says, it is profitable or expedient for you. Paul wanted the people to know it would be to their advantage to participate in this offering. I can imagine Paul saying, people, God will bless you greatly if you will join us in this valiant effort. Uh, he says, so do not miss his blessing. Finish the task. He says, Paul wanted them to follow through and complete what they began a year earlier to do. This gospel endeavor was worthy. The need was uh, uh, credible, and now was the time to finish what they had started. Imagine Paul shifting in his chair as he was writing these words, probably thinking to himself, I do not know if you are being distracted by others or if life itself has sidelined you. But now is the time to finish what you committed to do. The need is there. Your integrity is on the line. Uh, get it done. And it, this is what Paul is commending these Christians to do. Next page. Why is it hard to be generous over a long haul? You know, is it, is it important to be a Christian? And it be, to be a Christian, to be into Christianity, is it, is it good to be in for the long haul with that mindset? Yes. See, Christianity, when you get saved, you're in for the long haul. And you've got to have that mentality because Christianity is challenged today. All across the world, Christianity is being challenged. It's on the news. Now you used to, a lot of times you'd see a debate between Christianity. Now every single week, there is nothing, the week that don't go by where the newscasters Christianity is trying to either get in a black eye or a slap on the face. And yes. Yes, they did. Yep. Okay, that organization is 2% of the population. And look at the power they got. 2%. Oh, it just took two women to, to change all that. It, it just, uh, they said it's like a dog wagging the tail. The tail followed. I mean, did the ball. Yes, the, the dog is following the tail, still the tail following the dog. <laughs> And that's right. God said, God said in, 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 in uh, was it Jeremiah? Yeah, Jeremiah. Uh, Jeremiah said, can you, can you push a cart with a rope? <laughs> he said, what you're doing, what you're doing, listen to these false prophets. You know, you take a rope, you can pull a cart. Yeah. But he said, now turn around and try to push it with that. You can't do it. 
What you're doing is wrong. <laughs> it ain't going to happen. But they're 2% of the world, 2% of America. But look at the power they got. Yeah. Well, and, and they overturned what we voted. But, they're trying to overturn it. Now it's but let me tell you something, folks. You got an X. Yeah. You got an X. Now, they, they ain't too much you can do about what's happening, but you got an X, which is a vote. Yeah. Now, we voted it down. I, that's what I'm talking about. But, but good as a vote is, is get them people. It, it's, 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 it's time like this that if we do not have a voice, and we don't, every, every organization has some kind of hierarchy. White people don't have no hierarchy. We have nobody protecting us. We have nobody fighting for us. The male men are taking a back seat to everything. And it's simple as that. The white men. They have, we have no organization. Everybody else has got organizations that they got money into. They got lobbyists in Washington. And they've, they're, they're paying all these senators and throwing out money to them and giving them all kinds of perks. But we don't have nothing. And we have nobody fighting for us. And, and, and we just let them do it. And we're the majority. And we're letting a minority rule. Because we don't have a voice. And we vote for people that are for it. And when you vote for somebody that is for it, you are for it. And it's, a, it's behind every bit of it. And, and I've already made up my mind. If you're in, you're out. I ain't voting for nobody that's in. Nobody. I don't care who he is or who she is. And, and so it's as simple as that. They got it messed up. And, they, and, and, and if, we don't, if we don't, one day we're going to wake up and we're going to say, uh, what happened? What happened? And we did it. We did it. And, and people, you know, they, they talk about this affordable health care. If it's so affordable, how come people from Washington don't jump on it? They ain't going to jump on it. No, they ain't going to jump on it. If it's not good, what do you think? It's going to be for us. They're telling us to take a cut. They're telling us to take cut. You know, the, uh, Obama just said, well, if you, don't, you can't afford, get rid of, if you can't afford Affordable Care Act, get rid of your cell phone, you know, get rid of your cable vision, you get rid of this. But then they vote themselves a 35% raise. What is this? You want me to, to sacrifice, but then you're going to, the Congress and the Senate's going to vote themselves a 35% raise. And when I worked at Ford Motor Company, I had to fight and scratch and go on strike just for a 3% raise. And then, and now you ain't got no raises for years and years and years. Matter of fact, you're taking, they're taking cuts. They got a bill in now to get rid of your landlines. So your cell phone's going to go up so high. There's no competition there. Your cell phone's going to go up so high. You can't afford them, so you'll get rid of them too. Voluntarily. Well, they got, they already got a state right now that is going to ban any Fossil burning whatsoever. Coal, wood. They're trying to ban wood burning because, you know, some people that are, uh, you know, don't have a lot of money or want to save money, they get a wood stove. And so they go out and they cut wood or whatever it is and they burn wood. Well, now they got this state going to ban wood. So that means that you're going to have to buy gas now because you're going to have, you can't heat your house for wood. And it starts in one state and they're going to have a hard time down south because a lot of people down south still heat with wood. Yeah, but see, they start with those states that has very little wood burning so everybody says okay so you get one state going and another state going just like what happened in michigan you get one state doing it one state doing it and all of a sudden they're all doing it and 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 so and and, and it's an abomination under god anyway you look at it so everything that happens on this earth wood burning is not going to hurt this earth it's not the cause of global warming like they say i mean if it is they better stop forest fires <laughs> because them forest fires they have in California, California is the ones trying to pass this law. Well, California puts more wood smoke in the air than any state in the union because of their forest fires. And, and so it's, it's, all, it's all for control or something. I don't know what it is. Well, yeah, and, control is just like you go on vacation. Whenever everybody takes off for the summer, they raise the price of gas. That's awesome right there. They, they can control how many you get on the boat. 
Let's look at the next little session on page uh, 48. 2 Corinthians 8, 12 through 15. For if there be first a willing mind, and that's, that's the first thing you've got to have is a willing mind. You've got to have a good will to do something. It is accepted according to that uh, a man hath, and not according to what he hath not. God does not expect you to give something you don't have to give. If, if God is going to allow you to give something, he gives you a talent to get. See, and that's why there's a lot of different social steps on the ladder. Uh, you know, and somebody's on the bottom rung, somebody's on the top rung. You know, and, and everybody's in between. And, and so you give wherever category of life that you're in, whatever step you're on in that ladder, that's what you give, whatever it is. Because a person that is, gives little with the clean heart, little is much in the hands of God. And it's it. It's, it's the heart. It's the willing heart that, that we give with. He said, for I mean not that other men be eased and you burden. It, it meaning this, okay? I am not going to take from the rich and give to the poor. See, I am not going to take those people that have worked hard to get what they got and give to somebody that's sitting in a lazy chair watching TV and, and you know, doing all these ec- other extra, ec- extra uh, curricular activities like selling drugs and, and pimping and all that kind of stuff and then drawing a welfare check. That's not what he's talking about. And that, that, that Paul said, I'm not talking about that I'm going to take from the rich so that this other person down here could lay at home and do nothing and you're going to pay him. And that's what he's saying right here. He is saying, for I mean not that other men be eased and you burden. God is not going to work me to death and take my money and give to somebody that's lazy, that don't want to do nothing. And so, uh, and, and, and Paul is making that clear with these people. He said, but by an equality, he makes it equal. He said, for now at this time, your abundance may be a supply for their want. See, people have needs, but they have wants of doing something, and they can't do it because they don't have the means to do it. And so now this Macedonian church is going to help that church down there do what they want to do. And that's what we're supposed to do. And he says, for their abundance also may be a supply for your want, that there was an equality. It is made equal. Now, if you, you, if you, if you're witnesses to somebody, okay, and you want to get somebody saved that is lost, you're going to have to sacrifice your time. You're going to have to give of yourself. That's your talent that you have. You're going to have to give of your time. Okay, now what happens when that person comes to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ? See, now you are going to receive abundance of a blessings from God because you led this person to the Lord. Now, you were sacrificing with, for them. Now they're going to be sacrificing with you, and you're stronger. The church gets stronger. Every time somebody gets saved, joins the church, the church gets stronger. And, 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 and this is what Paul is relating to as far as monetary gain. Paul said, you learn how to use those things that are earthy, and then I'll show you how to use your spiritual things. See, if you don't know how to use your earthly talents, how can you use your spiritual talents? You can't. You've got to learn one to the other. And, and, and if you notice that as people come in, into the church, they bring all their talents with them. They bring all their testimonies with them. They bring all their failures with them. They bring all their successes with them. They bring their their losses and they bring their gains with them. And they use it for the glory of God and to to, to help the church. And he says, for it is written, he that, and he says this back in uh, Exodus. This, This is a quote from Exodus. He said, he that had gathereth much hath nothing over. So that means a guy that has great talents, say, who's the highest paid guy in the earth, in the world today? Like Bill Gates or, or the Facebook, uh, Facebook kid. He's in his 20s, and that Facebook kid makes millions and millions, billions of dollars. Okay? Okay, he said, okay, they gather much. He says, have nothing over. Now, what does he mean by that? 
if a guy's making $20 billion a year, and he's, that's much. I mean, men, you can't even fathom that. <laughs> okay, he says has nothing over. So, you know, a lot of these people, they build colleges. Uh, you look at uh, the Carnegie Hall. You know, that guy come over from overseas, and uh, he didn't have nothing. He was a young man. His dad got killed, and his mom brought him over here. He was poor as dirt. He started out, Carnegie started out in New York, and he was a, 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 a note runner. They didn't have telegraph, you know, couldn't get telegraph going from, like a guy had to go two miles down the road, you know. Well, they'd have runners. Well, Carnegie started out as a runner. Then he got him a bicycle. Then he met this guy on, on the train that was, you know, train was getting real big then. Then he, he, he met this guy that was in the train, and, you know, because he was a runner, and he would run notes down there. Well, so he got involved with it. Well, the first thing you know, they said, well, you know, you got wood bridges, and they're going to rot. Let's find out how to make steel bridges. So Con Carnegie said, well, you know, they, we can make them out of steel. So he started all the steel mills. And he built all the steel railroad bridges, and he got millions and millions of dollars, man, just working with the railroad. He built Carnegie Hall. He built libraries all over the place. He gave back to, the, to, to what he said, God abundantly bless me. I'm going to abundantly bless society. And that's what he did. Hershey's Chocolate was a Christian. And you go down to Hershey's Chocolate in Pennsylvania, go through that thing, and see what all Mr. Hershey did down there in Pennsylvania. He gave it all back. So he had millions, and he gave it all back to the public. And so he had nothing. Okay, now look at this next session, next, next little thing. He says, let me find it. Oh, he that had gathered much hath nothing left. Now watch this. And he that hath gathered little had no lack. So that means that the guys on top helps the people that's on the bottom. As simple as that. If, if the man that has much, he has no gain, he ends up when he dies on this earth with nothing. The guy that has little, when he dies, he does not die lacking nothing. He has everything he needs. And God has made it like that. It's all equal. And God has made it equal. He said to, to finish this, if you read in Exodus, it says, They gathered every man according to his eating. And that's the, that finishes that verse. They didn't put that in there, but if you go back and read in Exodus, that sentence they left out. They gather every man according to his eating. And, no. See? And, 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 and that's pride. Okay? That's right, and he said this to that rich man that tore down his barns. That man that, built, you know, that had all that substance, uh, he got proud. You know, he got, he got to where he thought that he was something. Well, man, look at me. And he didn't realize that everything you have, God gives you. And when you lose that insight, then you become poor at heart. See, and so you got to be rich in God through Christ. And, 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 and realize that I don't care how much abundance that you have, it's as though you have nothing because it belongs to God. And if you have little, God is not going to let you lack. And he's promised us that. That's the promise of God. And so, so we got to look at this. And you look at page 49. If you had a financial need, what was met by a group of, uh, of believers, what would the community, what was the com, uh, communi communicate with you? What would that communicate with you? If, if you had a financial need and it was met by a group of believers, if, if say the church took care of it, you know, what would that communicate to you? If the church is here as a soul-saving station, that's what we are. We're a soul-saving station. That's, that's what the church is. That's the ultimate goal of a church is to see people get saved. Now, people come in this church. They come and they go. This church has been filled, filled up 10 times since 06. You agree with that? I mean, we could have filled this church up 10 times, but why ain't we full? 
I mean, it's just like you go in a circle. I had a guy tell me one time, uh, he was a Christian brother at work, and he goes up to a, a big church up there, got about 5,000 members to it. And they had a lot of trouble when they first started. He said, he said, he, you know, we call each other brother. You know, he said, hey, brother, he said, he said, man, our church, he said, we go out, we got a bus ministry, and he said, we go out and get people. And he said, I, it's like a funnel. He said, we push them in a little in, they fall out the big. <laughs> You know, and I said, you know, that makes a lot of sense, man. It's hard to get people to come to church, and it's like they fall out the big end of the funnel. It's easy for them to leave. <laughs> and I said, that makes sense. And, and, and we get, we've done that right here at Lakeside since 2006, people that's come into this church, and they stay for a little while, and then they just they leave. And, and uh, we don't know why. But if, if the church, a group of believers, help you, that communicates to you. The church is to help the needs of the people on the outside so that they can see the God that's on the inside. And that's the purpose of Christianity to begin with because God, he lives inside of us, but if God don't come to the outside, people can't see him. And I don't care how much you claim to be a Christian, and, and you know you might be the best Christian here at Lakeside, but if you hold God on the inside, people don't know that he's on the inside. You got to let him out. And, and they a lot of people do, and a, and a lot of people are, I call them gawkers. A lot of people just like our church, they like to go to church, but they don't want to get committed. You know, they'll come here for a, a week, and they'll go somewhere else for a week, and they just come in and they gawk. They look around, and you know, they don't get what entertainment they need or what they see something that they don't like and they go look for another church. And, but eventually they're going to find something they like, I guess. I hope so anyway. Uh, they're, they're church hoppers, you know. They're like grasshoppers, man. They hop in here and there, you know. And, and, uh, uh, but there's people like that. Uh, but Lakeside, we want people that has a willing heart and we want laborers, buddy. And we desire that. Now look at this, page uh, 49. Give according to what God has given you. And that's all that God expects from you. God will never ask you to do nothing that where he has not already put you through it and you are trained to do it, God will not allow you to give something that he has not given you. You cannot give something that God has not given you. You can't do it. God has to give it to you first. And, 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 and it's with your monetary gain, it's with all your talents, it's with all your gifts. If you, if you ain't got a gift, if God don't give you a gift, then don't try to use it in the church because you'll make a mess out of it. And there's a lot of people do that. And, 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 and so give only what God has given you to give. And when you stay in God's realm, then you can be blessed and the people will be blessed. He says give, into, give, give according to what you have, not that which you don't have. You can't give something you don't have. You can't be something. Have you ever seen a people, a person trying to be something they're not? <laughs> and that's what it is. You can't give something you don't have. And you can't be something you're not. I don't care how much you try. You can try. And sometimes we put over a good persona, but, I mean, after a while it's going to come to the surface. People are going to realize that you're not what you think you are. He says, give according to equality. Make it equal. God loves this. God always does uh, with his people. Let's read the next section on page uh, 80, 51, and we'll, we'll close. He says, for as touching the uh, ministering up to the saints, it is superfluent for me to write to you. For I know the forwardness of your mind, for which I boast of you to them in, of Macedonia and Arcadia. He says, are ready uh, a year ago, and your zeal hath provoked uh, very many. Yet have I sent the brethren, lest our boasting of you should be in vain. In this benefit that, as I say, ye may be ready. This is, he's going to take up a collection beforehand, because he's been boasting about them that they're going to help the church down in, in, in Jerusalem. And he said, now I want you to go before me, take this prepare their hearts, take up his collection before I get there so that people won't give grudgingly when we get there because he has boasted about them. He said, let's happily if they of Macedonia come with me and 
and find you unprepared, we, uh, that we may not ye, should be ashamed in this uh, same confident uh, boasting. Meaning this, if I tell them that they're going to abundantly give to them and I go down there and they don't have no gift, then it's going to be embarrassing to me. <laughs> That's what he is saying. Therefore, I thought it necessary to ex- uh, exhort the brethren that they would go before unto you and make up beforehand your bounty. Whereof ye had noticed before that the same uh, might be ready as a matter of bounty and not as of covetousness. So, see, that's why he's taking this collection up beforehand. And he wants to take it up beforehand because he's been bragging about them and he don't want to go down and be embarrassed. Any comments? If not, that concludes our study. You're dismissed till... Quarter till. Choir go in the back. Oh, we're not having choir today. Margaret. How you doing, girl? Okay, you still got your earpiece on. Yeah, I don't want to go in the bathroom. I'm joking around with me.